Um, in this video clip, we're going to graph uh, the following two functions, but we're going to try to save on the work and use the rules of transformations to speed up the process. So start with the first function f1 of x being equal to the square of x minus 2 plus 1. So if you uh, set up the graph, so we're going to be graphing y equals x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. And if you take this function apart, the very last operation in here is this adding 1. So this adding 1 at the end uh, is equivalent to moving the graph of the function up by 1. And the graph of the function that should be moved up by 1 is uh, whatever is left over once you take plus 1 out. So to go from this function y2 to from the graph of the function y2 to the graph of original function, we just have to move the graph of y2 up by 1. So that's uh, what you have to do to go from this one to that one. And then, if you look on this y2, there is x minus 2 in the formula for this function. And the subtracting 2 directly from x is equivalent to moving the graph for right by 2 units. So if you take that minus 2 directly subtracted from x out, uh, you're looking on the graph of y3, which is just x squared. So to go from the graph of y3 to the graph of y2, we have just to move the graph to the right by two units. And the deal is that the graph of the last function is ridiculously easy to get. So to do that, so we're going to label the axis, and then uh, we're going to sketch the graph of the function y3. You just plug a few x values, and you get this parabola shape for the graph of y3 equal equals x squared. Then to get, uh, to get the graph of y2, we have to move this blue graph uh, right by two units. So we're going to get this new red graph. So just shift the blue graph right by two units. And then to get the graph of the function we're actually interested in, we just have to move the red graph up by one unit. And when you do that, you get the graph of the original function, y equals x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1. So this green graph is the graph of the function we are interested in. So likewise, uh, looking on the graph of the second function, so this is the graph of y equals absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3. So we can start taking it apart. So this minus 3 at the end uh, is uh, equivalent to moving the graph down by 3 units. And the graph that should be moved down is the graph of absolute value of x plus 4. So to go from the graph of y2 to the graph of y, we just have to move the graph of y2 down by 3 units. And then if you look on the formula for y2, there is 4 added directly to x. So that is equivalent to moving the graph left by 4 units. And if you take this plus 4 out, uh, you get a simple function, y3 equals absolute value of x. And the deal is that to go from the graph of y3 to the graph of y2, you just have to move the graph of y3 left by 4 units. And the graph of y3 is quite easy to get. So if you lab label x and y axis and plug a few points, the graph of y3 is exactly this v-shaped graph. That's the graph of absolute value of x. So now if you move it left by 4 units, so you get the graph of absolute value of x plus 4. That's this red graph. And to get the graph of original function, we just have to move this red graph down by 3 units. So go ahead and do that, and we get the green graph, which is the graph of the original function. So it's the graph of y equals x plus 4 minus 3. We're going to work on sketching the graph of the following two functions. So the first one is f3 of x being equal to negative of x plus 1 cubed plus 2. 
Uh, so we're working on the uh, making the graph of y equals negative of x plus 1 cubed plus 2. So if you take it apart, uh, there are two transformations going on. So this plus 2 at the end is responsible for moving the graph up by two units. And this plus 1 inside of parentheses is responsible for moving the graph left by one unit. So if we take those two transformations out, we get the original graph. So it's y2 equals negative of x cubed. And to go from y2 to y, uh, we have to do those two transformations. Uh, then uh, this negative sign in front is uh, responsible for reflection of the graph uh, with respect to x-axis. So if we take that out, uh, we get the original function y3 equals x cubed. And the sequence of actions we're going to take, we're going to graph this y3. Then we're going to do one transformation and two more, and we're going to end up with the graph of a slightly more complicated function. Okay, so if we graph y3 equals x cubed, uh, then we're going to get this curve. y3 equals x cubed, that's a cubic parabola, or just cubic curve. So if you reflect uh, this graph with respect to x-axis, so this piece is going to be just mirrored down, and the left side is going to be just mirrored up with respect to x-axis, so we end up with this red curve, which is y2 equals negative x cubed. And then to get the graph of y, we just have to move this red graph up by two units and left by one unit. So if we do just that, we end up with this green curve. That's the graph of negative of x plus 1 cubed plus 2. Okay. So moving on to the second function, so we're trying to graph y equals 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. And if we start taking it apart, the plus 1 at the end is responsible for moving the graph up by one unit. The minus 2 inside of parentheses is responsible for moving the graph right by two units. So if we take those two transformations out, so we get the intermediate function y2. Uh, which is exactly 3x squared. So to go from the graph of y2 to the graph of y, we have to do those two transformations. And uh, then for the formula for y2, there is 3 in front of x squared. Since that 3 is multiplied on the outside, that is responsible for vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So, and if you take that vertical stretch out, you have the original function y3 equals x squared. So to go from y3 to y2, we have to do vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Okay, so we'll start by drawing the graph of y3 equals x squared. So label it axis, and here's the graph of y equals x squared. So then we're going to stretch it vertically by 3, so every y coordinate gets multiplied by 3. So for example, this point had height 1, so after transformation it should, had, it should have the height of 3. So we get something like this for the stretched in vertical direction graph, so it's going to look kind of taller. That's the graph of y2. And then to, to get the graph of original function, all we have to do is to move it right by two units and up by one unit. So once we do that, we get the graph of original function, that's the green curve, y equals uh, 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. We're going to work on making the graphs of the following two functions. So we'll start with the first function, and we're trying to make the graph of y equals 1 half times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 5. So if you start taking this function apart, this minus 5 at the end is responsible for moving the graph down by 5 units, and the plus 1 inside of absolute value is responsible for moving the graph left by 1 unit. If you take those two transformations out, uh, we end up with a function y2 equals 1 half of absolute value of x. So to get the graph of original function from the graph of y2, we have to do those two transformations. 
So then uh, moving further, this one half in front of the graph, uh, one half in front of the absolute value is responsible for shrinking vertically by a factor of two. So, and the very original function is y3 equals absolute value of x. So the easy way to, to get the graph of original function is to start with the graph of absolute value of x, then do this transformation, and then move it around by that many units. So for graph uh, y3, uh, y3 equals absolute value of x is this blue graph. Uh, then we're going to shrink it vertically by a factor of 2. So the height of every point on the graph is going to be divided by 2. So this point here at height 2, so it should be at height 1 when we're done. So this is the result of shrinking by a factor of 2 in vertical direction. That's the graph of y2 equals 1 half times absolute value of x. Then we're going to move the red graph left by one unit and down by five to get the graph of the original function. So moving it left by one and down by five gives us the graph of very original function. One half times absolute value of x plus one minus five. And then moving on to the second function. Uh, so we're trying to do the graph of y equals square root of negative x minus four. So this minus 4 at the end is responsible for moving the graph down by 4 units. So if you take that out, you have the function y2 being equal to the square root of negative x. And this negative in front of x is responsible for reflection with respect to y-axis. So if you take that out, you're going to end up with y3 being absolute value of, um, being the, rather y3 being the square root of x. So the course of action is to graph y3. So this is the square root curve. So you can do it point by point, or you can um, use other means. So that's the graph of square root of x. Uh, then we're going to reflect it with respect to y-axis. So it's essentially going to start pointing leftwards when we're done with the reflection. And then we just need to move it down by four units. So that's the graph of uh, y equals square root of negative x minus 4.